Good afternoon and welcome to my Facebook Live. My name is Michelle Dutrissa and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stamping Up. Yeah. So um, today what I thought we'd do, I've had an actually very busy month with my alterations. So um, I've received a few deliveries and I haven't been able to have a look at them. So I thought what we'd start with is having a look at some of the things that I got in my last box. Now I did get this about a week ago and I've only just opened it today. So it's some new products. So I thought that would be a little, something a little bit fun, a little bit different and uh, we'll have a look. So let me just find us first on my Facebook page. Just make sure that we're in the right spot. Okay, I'm not coming up, but there's something's happening. Yes, I think we have it. Sure Whoops, let's turn this down so we don't have any volume. Beautiful. Okay. So let me pop that up out of the road. Now, if you have never been on here before, you're visiting, please um, pop on and say hello and uh, let me know where you're from. So if I don't comment also to you straight away, I will get back to you after the uh, video has finished. Hi Anita, how are you? Um, because I don't always see all the comments, so um, please forgive me if, uh, if I don't reply straight away, but I will get back to you. So what we're going to be looking at today is some of the new products. Oh, better flip us over first so you can actually see what we're looking at. So hold on one second. There we go. I think that should be better. Okay, what's happening here? It looks like my screen has frozen. Let's see. Are we still working? Yes, we are. Okay, so these are our new catalogs. Now, this is our mini catalog for January, June 2022, which starts in January of um, next year, which is only a couple of weeks away. And also along with that is our celebration, which goes from the 4th of January to the 28th of February. I can't show you what's inside these catalogues at the moment, um, but I do have a supply of them here. So if you are in Australia and you don't have a demonstrator, please contact me by leaving a message on this page or you can put, um, private message me and uh, I can get some details from you and send these out to you. So it doesn't matter where you are in Australia, but you do need to be in Australia. So, so the products we're going to look at now are from this catalogue. So I can actually show you some of the products, but not the actual inside the actual catalogue itself. So let me have a look what we've got here. I'll just grab my pile. So to start with, what I thought I would show you is the Hello Ladybug stamp set and when you purchase that you can purchase it as a bundle and that comes with the punch so um that one i think is going to be a lot of fun to play with they've got a few punches um and uh, stamp sets that go together in the mini um and uh they're all around about you know got a theme of animals so um they're quite cute so i'm hoping to get a few more to play with but i thought this is just going to be a really good fun one this year as well so let me just move that one to one side uh let's see what else have i got to show you here okay in the moment stamp set now um, we've already seen quite a few people putting some of their examples of this one up on Facebook because a lot of people did purchase this or get this with their um, uh, on stage at home um, program but I didn't get one so I've just ordered mine and I can't wait to have a play with that so that should be a nice fun one and that one is a cling stamp set so um, really great for uh, colouring in with your pencils or water colouring. So um, can't wait to have a go at that either. Okay, what else do I have here? Now, we also have the Artful um, the stamp set. Now, this is actually part of a bundle. So it's the Artful Layered. And I can't remember what the whole bundle is called, but within that bundle, what you get is, let me grab it so I can show you, some designer series paper. Now, I haven't even opened this as yet. That's why I'm saying I've had this sitting in my office here for over a week, and I literally have been so busy that I haven't even 
opened any of this so today is my first day of actually looking at what all these papers look like so um, let's have a look and see what we've got in here so we've got that beautiful design and on the back of that is that one so it's just got a very um soft script on that and that would be in pale papaya so um that's a beautiful one and what else do we have this one here i've generally stayed away from a lot of leafy type designs and then that's the reverse of that and that would be your evening evergreen um but this one he just sort of grabbed me for some reason so i can't wait to have a play with that one and the reverse of that one is that and i would say that's calypso coral on the back of that it's got a very nice um sort of a uh, oh, what would you call it vintage um like a worn type look to it which is quite nice now these designer series papers you get um 12 sheets there's um six designs uh so you get six um double designs so you've got 12 how can I put this? Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's there's six designs. There's one on each side, which will make 12 designs all together, and you get two of each sheet. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, and then you've got this beautiful one here as well. And lots of lovely Bermuda Bay in that one. And we must be up to the last one now. No, we've got one more after this one. So you've got that one. And on the back, you have that stripe. And the very last one is that one. And on the back of that, just a lovely little spot. So there's quite a few nice designs in that. Also, with the designer series paper, they've brought out in this particular suite, they've brought out this one as well, which is a printed vellum. So, let's have a look and see what comes in this. So, there's also 12 sheets in this, and this one here, which has got like a, a fine script all over it. Then we have one here with a map. Now that's vellum with black on it. And it looks like we've got some vellum with white printing and that looks like a, like a newspaper type print on that one. White on white. Also with that map design. And then a white vellum with the black printing, also in that newspaper. And then it looks like we have a white gain with that, the white um, printing on the vellum in the script as well. So that'd be a lot of fun to play with and try to work out with that other design. Now also in this suite, just pop those back into there. Whoops, of course, starting to should put those away before I open that up. Okay, so also what comes in this particular suite here. So let me just get rid of all this paper, pop those away later there so it doesn't get damaged. So we've also got the dies that go with this now. I do believe some of these dies may even cut out some of the designs on the designer series paper. So let's have a quick look. So there's our dies, and I'm assuming that if I grab. Designer series paper here. 
let's just have a quick look and see. I think it's going to be more this one here. Some of these will probably cut out. Yep, I think they will. So that looks like that will cut out that one. Well, I may have to have a bit more of a play, but fairly close to it. And then that one there looks like it may cut out that one there as well. So or maybe not quite. Let's have a look with another one. Yeah, it looks like it might be the black one it's going to cut out. But it will be fairly close, I would say. So um, have a look at that and make it um, a lot more fun too if you can cut out some of your designer series paper. I'm just wondering whether there's another sheet there that cuts out. As I said, I haven't even had a look at this, so I really don't know. I'd have to have a really good play and see what it cuts out and what it doesn't cut out. Um, by the looks of it that's going to be the sheet that it does but you've got all of these leaves so if we look at our stamp set it will cut out that one this one here will definitely cut out turn it over it will fit that one and then you have some really lovely little sentiments and you've got that um like a scripty one there as well that will go with that so um they're the stamps that goes with that and then you have some of these this is like a what they call a faux sea glass shapes and they're um like a little sea glass and they're all sort of little odd shapes so uh you know they they really look like little sea grass pebbles and then we have this beautiful now I've got a roll here which I've already opened because I got this roll a while back and that's the the ribbon that goes with it and the reason why I've pulled this is I wanted to see how well this unravels and it unravels really well and you're left with this really nice chenille type thread which I think will be lovely to wrap around um, some cards as well so I think that's going to be a fun ribbon to play with so um, with that lovely chenille trim on that so let me just pop these away so we don't lose them pop those back into there pop those down there so we got those right out of the road so that's that that i wanted to show you and also to um we've got these now these are and this is what we're going to have a little bit of a play with today these are the butterflies um and flowers layering decorative masks so just let me move this out of the road so you can actually see these masks i've already sort of started um let me just remove that and you can see put those back on in a minute i haven't played with these but i was just putting seeing how to cover up some masks on here but we've got these butterflies so you these are all you can use with um, your um, blending brushes you could use them um, with your paste um, if you want a little bit more embossing paste if you want a bit more dimension um, you could probably even trace them out and use them your watercolor pencils and color them in um, there's going to be a few things that we can do with with those and then they have these masks as well so you've got some lovely background oh there's another mask like those there's some lovely background masks so this is what we're going to have a quick play with today and see what we can create we may not get a card created but we may create some backgrounds now with these ones here this is sort of like your flower and then that like sort of get a, um, a bit of a bold flower there then that layers on top to give you finer detail um, and again with this one here we're going to sponge it and then you can layer that on top to add another color um, and then you've got leaves that you could add all around the outside edge and then these flowers here from what I can work out are 
this one here goes with that flower these two here go with these two over here so we're going to have a little bit of a play with them um i'll work out where i put them in to go pop them back on there because we're going to talk about how we can use those um and the other thing i wanted to show you was in the celebration of course with the celebration every time you spend 90 dollars or 180 dollars there's products that you can earn there as well so this lovely pack of paper here which is like a marbled type of paper um it's called um simply marble marvelous and this here you can when you spend 90 dollars you can earn this pack of paper here so you've got that one and that would probably be blushing bride i think and then you have that color that one on the back you have looks like the pale papaya with that one on the back well that's quite pretty you can really see the luster in that even though it's not a sheen it is a matte finish but it's just the way they've done the colors um it really looks satiny even though it's not satin or hasn't got a sheen to it then you've got that side and that would be fresh fraser i think and then you have that one that one i wonder what the color that one is so they're saying here you've got uh, balmy blue basic gray blushing bride bumblebee coastal cabana flirty flamingo gorgeous grape highland heather misty moonlight pool party and smoky slate so there's probably two different colors you could put with each of those then you this one here which is your basic gray of course and the last one would be the balmy blue and the other color in that one would be your misty moonlight so they are going to be fun to play with so that if you spend 90 dollars you can grab those papers there for free and of course there are other products in there as well that you could get for free and then if you spend 180 then you have this range here of designer series paper so let me open this one up and along with this paper here there is a stamp set that you go with it so spend 180 dollars and you get the paper and the stamp set together so we'll just have a quick look through there so you've got it's got a beautiful little outline of a bird on there then you have that lovely floral on the back so of course you've got two sheets of that one then you have that that is gorgeous with the green leaf on the back then you have that one there which is in your probably highland heather and that has that beautiful soft pattern on the back of it then you've got that one which would be i think it's either pale papaya and that one as well and just a little, a little dot but the dots like a little squiggle and then again two sheets of that one that one granny apple green which is beautiful and then you have your stripe and then that one with the black printing on it and the reverse of that one is that which would be a fresh freesia so let's just have a quick look at the colors that they say on here so basic black fresh freesia granny apple green petal pink pool party and shaded spruce so i didn't quite get all of those right but i was close and along with that you have this stamp set which is a photopolymer stamp set that will go with it um and uh, they should be lovely to work with as well so hopefully over the next few weeks uh, while i'm having a break from my sewing i will have a play with all of those and can show you some of the products we make so what i want to do now is have a look at these masks 
so as i said i don't know whether we'll make a card today but what i do want to try to do is let's have a look and see what we can do with the masks so i've cut a whole stack of basic white cardstock um i've chosen some colors from the stamping up range and i've chosen granny apple green misty moonlight balmy blue pear pizzazz highland heather and gorgeous grape and i thought what we might do is just make up some backgrounds and then later on in the week i will make cards out of them and um show them to you so we'll start with a couple of backgrounds now when we're using doing masking we want to make sure that our I might just take that out of the road that our cardstock isn't going to move so i've got a little bit of masking tape here now when i cut my basic white cardstock um, especially if i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do i always cut my sheet because it's a4 sheet into quarters so i've cut this into quarters so each one of these pieces is 10 and a half by 14.9 so um that way i can then cut it down to the size i want later on so what we're going to do is start off with looking at the easier of all the masks which are these ones here and i'm just going to layer that on top now you do want to hold this down and i'm just going to use my um post-it note tabs here and i'm just going to pop it down on each corner you can use masking tape um, painters tape anything like that just to hold it down but you don't want things to move and you want that to hold quite firmly so what i thought we'd do for this one is i'm going to use the granny apple green and we're going to use blending brushes so let me just take this brush and i'm going to take some of the granny apple green here take a little bit of color off and i'm going to start off the my page and work on so all i'm just going to do is just go over this now you could go over it and have the same density of color all the way or you could just leave some areas lighter and some areas darker it's really up to you but the whole idea of this today is just doing some backgrounds and then later on i can use them to make up a card so i don't think i want to go all over this completely whoops my mask isn't holding really well so i'm going to leave it at that i'm quite actually quite happy with that at the moment move all these out of the road as you can see you do want to make sure your mask is well and truly secure because that did move a little bit though you can't see that and i actually that's quite pretty so that's quite a nice background that you can use for a card okay so that's the first one so that's using that little floral mask there so let's try out the next one and it's really good to have when you get these things is to have a bit of a play and give these things all a go because you don't know what they're going to look like and you don't know how how well they're going to work so it just gives you a bit of an idea so you can play with it let's pop that one down make sure that's nice and secure i'm going to put another one at the bottom this time pop this one over the top now this one here has got lots of little moving parts so i would probably make sure that you secure this one down very well um, because i would say it's going to move a fair bit now i do have some painters tape here What you can do when you use something like this this is a low tack one this is um frog tape but you can also if you put it onto your clothing and pull it off just to give a bit of tackiness or pop it onto your skin just to 
and rub it down a little bit just to add a little bit of oils to that which will make it less tacky let's move that one out of the road because we might do this one with a different color so let's get some more of this tape Get rid of some of that so we want it to hold but we want it to okay so I'm going to continue with maybe a green because this being a leaf but I'm going to use the pear pizzazz and let me take that get rid of some of that green off there and let's take some of the pear pizzazz Take a little bit off and I'm just going to hold this down because with my fingers a little bit and then work over it fairly quickly because there is a lot of movement in this. Um, I can feel when I'm um, brushing this over and even my fingers are gripping onto each of those stripes. So I'm not quite sure how well we're going to go because I like to use my brush in a circular motion but these are sort of whoops might use a bit more of the frog tape might need to really sort of stick this down See how that improves that a bit. I'm sort of tending to go up and down with the stripe a little bit here rather than going in a circular motion just for the fact that the um if i go into a circular motion all those little stru the each little piece is lifting up so it's not giving me real good um coverage so let's just keep working and we will work it in a stripe just brushing our brush up and down rather than going circular it might work a lot better so let's just start from here, go up in a straight line. And let's have a look and see how that's going to look. Now to wash all these afterwards you could just um, clean it down with some baby wipes or just get your um, your chamois, your damp chamois and wipe those over to get rid of the excess ink. But you can see on that one there and maybe too I probably could have adhered it down a lot better but um, it's not as clean and I think that's because when like my lines these ones here are quite nice and fine I've got a lovely crisp um, image on there but these ones in the middle are sort of a little bit blurred and I'm wondering if that's where I was trying to go around in a circle and that's giving me that blurred one so if I was going to use that one again I'd probably only go up and down with my blending brush um, it's probably not one I would use my sponge daubers on. I'd have to really um, sort of work on that one um, and trying to keep all of these little lines here still. So um, we'll have to continue playing with that one and seeing what we come up with. But I think maybe starting off with really adhering that one down well would be a good start. Okay, so let's grab another piece of cardstock, pop that one down. Let's pop 
that down on top. And we can use this mask. Now this is a very pretty one. Do like this mask. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my painter's tape. I think I'm going to have better success with this. Since my mask is actually a little bit bigger than my quarter sheet of A4 cardstock, um, my painter's tape isn't actually going onto my cardstock there at all. And pop a little bit there at the top. So let me just clean that brush down. And this time I think we might have a look at using maybe the Highland Heather. So again, working in a circular motion. So let's pick up some colour on our brush. Again, just work over that. This would also look nice too with your embossing paste, I think, on this one. And you could easily colour your embossing paste with your re-inkers as well. Just going to pop a bit more colour on this one. I want to have a bit more strength. Okay, so let's have a look at what this one does. So peel that off. And there's our finished piece there. And isn't that beautiful? So I think that one will make some lovely backgrounds as well for your cards. Sometimes all you need is a piece like this and mat it um, with the, you know, a bit of colour behind it and then pop your sentiment on top. And you know that could be all that's required on some of these too. Okay, so that's our three, three of our mask masks used and got some lovely effects so there's only just this one here I think I need to play with a bit more to to work out what we can do with that one but otherwise I really love those two masks there so I'm going to pop all of those to one side and let's bring in another piece of cardstock now with this one here I think we are going to have to mask this off reasonably well just to hold it into place so i'm not going to rely on the post-it note tape for this one and i'm just going to tear that in half just so then i can take this I'm just going to pop that one there so the first one we think we might have a go at is the butterfly so we've got the two parts of our mask here now we want to, what we want to do is we want to color this part first and then this part but to start with we don't want to put color on this one in here if um, we want to be able to just do this area here and I'm just going to turn this piece of cardstock around actually and then 
So let's use this one this way. The butterfly might fit in there a little bit better. Make sure that's squared off there. So when we brush our colour on, we don't want this coming up on it. We want it, we don't want have that image brushed. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take some tape. This is what I was trying to do before because you can buy post-it note. I'll show you. So we just want to mask that off so we're not going to get any colour coming through because we don't want to we don't want that image whoops we don't want to cover up his antenna either let's just try that part again let's cover up that there because all we want is this central butterfly but we want to have This is probably the fiddliest thing with this. I'm just going, I'm going to cut this away. Because we want our butterfly antennas, but we don't want the flower. We don't want this butterfly as yet. So the other thing you could use is post-it note. Now this post-it note comes from um, Kmart here in Australia. And it's actually cover all over. So I'm sure you can get post-it notes. Um, so it's not just on the top edge. It's actually all over. So you could even use something like this to, so if you don't have painter's tape, something like this to cover the image. But you want to make sure that you've got that one well and truly covered so if I pick a thing sticking everywhere here so if I pick this up I've now only got this large butterfly now I want to position this where I want it to go on my cardstock but I also don't want um, ink going on these lines here so I'm going to also pop post-it note on here and I'm going to pop another piece there as well so that's a lot of post-it note and tape you're using but I want only that area to have ink on it I don't want my ink spilling out past so what I'm going to do okay let's ink up our brush now I'm using the Highland Heather here and again just taking a little bit of ink, excess ink off my brush I'm just going to go over the top of this now you will need to hold um, certain areas down because I don't know whether you can see but this little part here with the antennas, the plastic template is wanting to lift a little bit. So what I'm going to have to do is I just want to go in very carefully. And then you may have to put your fingers in there just to hold that, that down. And we're just going to add in a circular motion our ink all the way around and within that butterfly shape. Okay, so once you've got, you're happy with your coverage. Okay, now I'm just going to close this up. And we're going to lift our template off. So just remove that one. I'm going to keep these because I want to reuse them. Just take that one off as 
well. And that one. And there's our beautiful butterfly image. Now, oh, what I want to do now is use this bottom one. So now we need to cover that big one. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take some post-it note. And I'm just going to take it at an angle and cover that particular one there. So we've now removed the one we just did and now we're going to layer this on top. Now you can just see through, I don't know whether you can see there because that post-it note is wanting to lift a little bit, but you can see through the outline underneath, okay, so I can see where, let's push all that down, I'm hoping you can see it, but I can see the shadowing from underneath where the um, the butterfly is that we just sponged so just want to make sure that is all well and truly masked down now again i want to cover up these areas here because i don't want to have ink coming off into those areas because i might want to use that on my card so i'm just going to cover these up again so any ink will go onto my tape onto my post-it note and another one down there so this time I'm going to grab the gorgeous grape and we're going to sponge with our blending brushes gorgeous grape on here so again just taking off that excess ink and let's just go over the top of this and add the darker color now of course you could add different colors but just remember that if you're putting a one color underneath and then another color on top when you start mixing two colors together you're going to get a third color so you want to make sure that if you're going to use a completely different colour, that <coughs> excuse me, that it's going to give you the colour that you're wanting. Otherwise, you could end up with something quite disastrous and quite muddy. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we come up with now. So let's remove all of these. You probably could cut these down a little bit if you wanted to save on your post-it notes a bit or use smaller post-it notes. This is just what I had handy. okay so let's see how we went so once we lift that and isn't that gorgeous so there's our butterfly so now i'm gonna to have to work out where i can use that in a card now of course you could fussy cut that or you could cut it out with um one of your rectangular dies But there we are. And that is very pretty. So you could even um, sponge or you know the background in a lighter colour and then even use your um, embossing paste to do and colour it a, you know a different colour again and use your embossing paste to do all that finer detail work as well. And that will give you a very text, textured sort of look. So um, that one's going to be a fun one to play with.
So let's grab another piece of cardstock and we'll pop this one down. we've got this time is this one here and we're going to be starting with this one here which doesn't have as much detail so we need to mask off these three so that's why I was playing with this earlier and I had a mask there and let's see if I've got the other piece I've had pre-cut Mask that one off, and we want to mask that one off up there. So let me grab one of these, and we can pop that right over the top. Let's line this up where we want it to go on our cardstock. So we'll pop that to there. Again, I want to mask off all these areas so I'm not going to get any ink on another area. Just to protect our basic white. And this time I'm going to use... Let me seem funny but I'm going to actually use blue so I'm going to use a balmy blue to start with let's grab so I'm using starting with my light color because remember we can't put a light color over the top of a dark color so start, always start with your lightest first and we're just going to sponge these in again I'm just holding down my template just to make sure it doesn't move. Now, if you wanted to take those flowers out to do a different color, you would have to mask them off and I'd probably use painter's tape to do that. So once we've done that one, lift up, take, remove all our masks, all right, post it note masks, and there's our image there. Now, what we need to do is match up this one to that one now you want to marry up that little flower so this little flower here and I'm going to start with that centers I'm going to work on the centers matching up those three centers there I think is going to be the easiest way so if I center that as best as I can let's just see if I've got to go the opposite turn this around and see if it works better if I do it that way because remember there might be a right and a wrong no it's that one so it seems to be if you use like this was a side I sponged on so that'd be my right side to my right side but you do need to sort of line these up a little bit and they're not that it's a little bit fiddly but probably well worth the effort in getting these right. And I don't think it really matters if you're not a hundred percent right. Okay, so I'm happy with that because it is a little bit of an artistic flare. So okay, I'm going to pop that one on there. that one 
across there. These ones on either side. Oops, I don't want that. I'll take that up a bit higher, so I'm covering up all my basic white. And you know what? I'm wondering whether this should have been done the other way because I don't think this is going to work because I'm going to be covering all of those areas. I think this one here should be our first one. Okay, retake. This is what happens when you haven't had a play with this. So what I'm saying here is because this one here This one here, my lines are finer, which made me think that this one had to be the last one. But when I layer that on top, I don't know whether you noticed, if I coloured that in, so if I just layer that now, even there like that, and I took my brush and coloured that in, I'm actually colouring on top of what I've already coloured. Um, so you would actually lose all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. Let's just take all of this out of the row. We're going to redo this. I'm going to flip this piece of cardstock over. Let's just. This is why you have to have a little bit of a play. With things before you start using it to make a card because you want to make sure that you've got it right and instead of doing this one first I'm going to do this one first and if I'm correct I'm going to put a number one up here so you know so I just want to centralize that in the middle pop that across there so I'm going to make this one here see what happens when I do that one as my first one Now there is a video that um, can be shared after this has been released in January, which does show you all of this, but I didn't watch it too clearly, did I? So when you have these videos, watch and take note. Okay, so let's try this one again. And this time we're going to colour this one in the balmy blue and see if this is going to work better because this has got more it's got bigger holes so it's got more um openings or for the ink to go i think that's the best way to word it so let's try this again so let's go over this and it's going to give us a finer line of detail it is definitely very quick it's a quick way of coloring but you are <coughs> very limited to only having a couple of colors as i said before unless you can sort of um, mask some of this away but these um finer line ones are very lot harder to mask okay so now we've got that image there and that's actually quite pretty like itself if you wanted to add that to a card now let's try this one again so we're going to match up that looks a lot better now these lines here are covering the white so we want to mask off all of that Pop that back down again. Let's mask off that bottom area there. And this one up here. So 
So we just want to cover up this piece of my basic white. This time we're going to take the darker blue. So I've got Misty Moonlight here and we're going to go over the top with Misty Moonlight. So let's just ink that up and we're going to see what happens. If we don't like it, we'll turn it, flip it over and have it go on the other side. So let's just go over this. So let's have a look and see what has happened. That's not too bad, actually. So what we did was I used, did this final one first and then put this one over the top. And as you can see there, you've got a two-tone flower now. That's not bad. I really like that. So with this mask we've got here, we've got some leaves. So what you need to do here, let me just get rid of these blue ink pads. In some ways I wish they had, a, um, I suppose, made their masks bigger and put less on one sheet. Um because you've sort of got a lot to mask off. So if we put that piece there, so you have to move these around so that that's got a curved edge there. So you need to move these around until it fits an edge. So that one there would fit that edge there quite well. So if you wanted to put those leaves there, then again, you'd have to bring in your mask and mask off All of those and because all we want to do is color in that so then you would have to mask off here and I'm actually going to use a smaller brush I do have some smaller brushes that I had purchased through Kmart and I'm going to use the pear pizzazz, which I think is going to be a lot easier to use with those smaller areas. Um, let me try it with stamping up this blending brush first, because all I want to do is colour this. And I've just got a little bit of pear pizzazz. And I just want to add, just working on those areas. That wasn't too bad, actually. So let's lift that up and have a look. That looks pretty good. And then we've got this little leaf over here, which we could put on there. Now you just want to make sure you're not going to bring ink. I should have or should move that mask there. So I'm not going to get any ink. Where I don't want it to be. So that's that one. There are a couple of different leaves in here. So then we could bring in, let's have a look at one of the other leaves. So let's have a look what we could do. What if we brought one of these leaves? I wonder where we could put that one. That one's got a slightly different shape. And you've got three leaves all there together. So you'd have to move this around. That actually looks like that would go there really well. So let's just mask off these areas here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of maybe darker green, I think. So this is garden green. I'm going to use the same brush because I used a lighter green before. I can go with this with a darker green. 
bit of that colour off and I'm just going to pop that one there. You only need to work ever so lightly with your brush. Let's lift this up and see how we've gone. Yeah, probably could have got a better fit, I think. But that's okay. I'm not unhappy with that. You've got one here with a little point in it, and I was just wondering if that would fit. Oh, that might just fit in there nicely. But I've got a piece here I don't want to get ink on, so let's cover that up. So you could really play with this quite a bit and build up your colours. Okay, that's that that turned out really well. I like that little leaf. Let's see if we can put that little leaf in another spot. Well, it doesn't quite fit as well, I don't think. Okay, let's just because that is quite a Let's see what else we could pop in there. Let's try that one there. is looking very very nice I think it needs something more down here and I want to use so if you used one of those I want to put maybe one of these down here but again just got to play with and just get that the right angle fitting in there nicely so let's whoops don't want to cover that up That in there. Let's see if I can remove some of this ink off here because I do want to go back to a lighter colour. Okay, let's grab a little bit of pear pizzazz again and just. Oops, it's got a little bit of that garden green added into that now. <laughs> this could be quite interesting. Okay, let's have a look. How's that? Wow, I'm really... Except I have got, I didn't mask this too well because I've got a little bit of green happening just here. So I'd say I've probably got a bit of, I've either flipped it and I've got a bit of green. So I'd probably, each time you have used this, I would give it a probably a good wipe down before you put another colour on. Because I may have flipped that over because I've got a bit of green in there with my blue but I mean really you can't see that probably only I would be the only one who'll ever know that that is there now I'm just wondering because we've got some of these other flowers I wonder if we can add some flowers behind a butterfly so let's take that and Pop that onto there. And what did I say before about cleaning this down? 
I'm going to clean it down before I start. Let's move that out of the road. Give this a good wipe just to make sure we've got no green coming off where it shouldn't be. Both sides. I think you're probably better to write an F and a B on the back of front and back of these so you know which is the front, which is the back. Um, especially when you're matching these up. Let that dry a bit. Let's bring this back in. This video is going a little bit longer than what I was originally planning. But hey, we're having a bit of fun here. The only reason I don't like painter's tape is the fact that it tends to stick when it's been stuck for a while. So let's just grab a bit more and st stick on things you don't want to stick and tear what you've got underneath. So let's D. So I'm just there trying to get some of this off there. Pop that onto there. Now, where's this flower? So what I want to do is pop that onto there. Now that's been caught and that's bent a bit, so I want to push it down a little bit. That's better. Now this is a complete plate. This is either going to work or be disastrous. So let's see how we go. Okay, so behind this we might do a pink flower. Um, we need to also mask off our little bit of butterfly there because we don't want... Now this is probably where you would be good to... Draw your butterfly. Let's get a new piece of masking tape. So what I'm going to do that is draw my butterfly's wings. So I've just drawn, traced out that butterfly onto there. Grab a pair of scissors and just cut that butterfly out along those lines. So we want to mask that butterfly out. Now I'm just, I am cutting this fairly loosely and I'm cutting just on the inside let me get rid of some of this post-it note because it's starting to bug me. I am cutting on the inside of that pencil line. So if we lift this up again, what we can do is pop that down over the top just on the inside of that butterfly. Now I'm more so worried about that wing at the moment. Probably could have cut this out a little bit better. Anyway, that will do for what I want to try. Then we're going to bring that back down. Grab another post-it note we want to take that part out. Now, 
to have a brush here yes and let's get rid of the green and let's bring in another color i might just bring in a little bit of polished pink actually i want to cut a lighter color than that to start with so remember we want to light work with our light colors first and then bring in our dark colors so this is our light color so I've got Blushing Bride here, and we're just going to bring that in like that, just very quickly. Just remove that, and we're going to pop down. Let's take the tape off this one line that up this time I want to mask off that and that one now we're going to bring in our polished pink and i'm just wondering whether i've brought in the right colors but let's work out see what we come up with okay and let's put this one in Lift all this up and let's have a look, see what we've got. Lovely. So now we could carry on with our some leaves in there. Maybe put some leaves in behind a butterfly. Because we've masked him off, so Bring in some of the lighter green. Okay, so this is just an example of what possibly we could do. So let's. Let's just lift up this mask and have a little bit of a a look. So I probably could have made this cut of this butterfly out a little bit bigger rather than going a little bit smaller because that flower has come down onto that leaf. But as you can see there, you could start actually building up quite an interesting effect. So um, yeah. I think this is going to be something really good to have some fun with. Um, as I said, I'd probably cut my mask a little bit bigger rather than smaller, because smaller is what we would normally do. But um, if we do a smaller flower there, let's see what comes up there. I think it's just something, it's going to be one of those things you have to play with and see what happens so again i'm just going to take my lighter pink a bit of color on there Lift that one up and the ones for this one here is on this mask so I, look, I think this is going to be one that's going to be well worth purchasing. Um, and I think you can have a lot of fun creating maybe your own individual designs that, you know, sort of um, 
and we're a little bit different than just so today this is just all about sort of having a look and creating your own own layers so I could have got that one a little bit better but hey I think um, in the next couple of days I'm going to play with this idea and um, see how it comes up so look I know we haven't created a card today but this was all about having a look at what we can do with these some of these new products and um, and so far I think um, we just bring a few of these back in get rid of some of these other little bits and pieces I've got post-it note and stuff everywhere but um, hey I think uh, this is uh, this is going to be quite fun and as we haven't even looked at using the embossing paste or any of those as yet but um, even if you did something like did a background say in this one here and you could cut that out um, and make a quite a beautiful card uh, using that so look I hope you've um, enjoyed having a look at this product I think it is a product that is going to be a fun one to play with but it is one that you're going to need to play and um, and have a go at it so I will probably do more videos on this um, as I said this is my first time having a play with this but uh, I really like it I'm actually um, quite happy with the way that this is all looking especially if you only want like a, a one layer or um, a two layer card if you just want to mat something as well so have fun try making a few of these yourself when you get your um, your um, masks and uh, please tag me in and show me what you come up with and what you create but I'm going to have a bit more of a play with this idea today and uh, see what else I can do so I'm going to say bye now so let me just flip the camera over just so we can say goodbye properly so um, have fun with this give it a go tag me I'd love to see what you create and um, I'll catch up with you next week I think um, we're getting pretty close to Christmas so if I don't catch up with you next week before Christmas have a lovely lovely Christmas and um, be safe take care and I'll see you later bye for now